don't read the newspapers. Don't listen to what it says on the BBC. It's only when you see what it's really like that you understand. It's known as the jungle, a crowded makeshift camp housing thousands of migrants. It is close to the French entrance of the Channel Tunnel near the port of Calais. There are estimates that around 7,000 people may now live here, all with one ambition. Yorker! Migrants are breaking down fences and storming the Eurotunnel rail terminal, jumping onto trains and trucks bound for Britain. Eurotunnel, the group that operates the Channel Tunnel, says it's caught more than 37,000 migrants attempting the crossing since the beginning of the year. This clandestine activity is happening all over Calais, all night long, every single day of the year. Hundreds gathering groups along roads or railways, hoping to catch a UK-bound truck or train traveling in the tunnel under the English Channel. It's blatant. It's in broad daylight. People of England, we would like to say hi and welcome. Thank you, people of England. Actually, they have brought lots of foods, chocolates, sweets. And we'd like to thank you guys for all these things. And my message to all people in England, that you're really kind, you're really helpful, and we thank you. Volunteers, many from London, are doing everything they can to help out. They bring their vans, they bring their cars, and they bring us donations, and we get them together and we bring them straight out to the camp. It just feels like the world's descending into chaos and we should all try and help. But truck drivers, who face the daily challenge of getting to the UK without people hiding illegally on their vehicles, aren't happy. With all this help and, and aid that's being supplied, they're attracting them like a magnet, they're attracting them to Calais. How big a threat is it to your drivers? Every day, every night, you know, these the, my drivers are, are on their own. They're confronted sometimes by five, 10, 15, 20 people. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great danger to them, and I worry constantly about it. Sometimes, even when you're driving, I've had a brick thrown at the windscreen, hit the top left-hand side of the cab, and that is what we are up against here. When you see them cut the side of a trailer open, if they've got a knife, it's possible that they're going to use it if you're going to try and uh, detain them. And uh, through a granite block, straight through the windscreen. And they're just literally just pelting your truck with rocks for no apparent reason. We Worst, get rocks yeah. thrown at us, yeah. iron railings thrown at us, yeah. all sorts. They've got knives and poles and bars. They've only got to smash the window screen and your uh, thing, or smash the side door and get in. Could come to the stage where, the, you know, you've stopped and they're dragging you out of here. I've been waiting for a truck driver to get killed because it could happen. We get asked a lot by different people, but do you not feel sympathy for the immigrants, the refugees and stuff? And we did up to a point, but that we're past that point now. When somebody's standing in front of you with a knife and a broken beer bottle, um, drawing their finger across their, their throat, looking at you, uh, sympathy is a very, very scarce emotion. Terrified of drawing attention to herself, this Syrian refugee only goes out twice a day, and that's just to go to the toilet. They take it in turns to sleep because they're scared someone will attack them. 
I sleep and eat here, and I'm surrounded by men. The people living next to us are Syrian, but we don't know the people living in the rest of the camp. They're from other countries, they speak different languages and have different cultures. We don't know anything about them, so we're scared and have to be on our guard. Only 10% of the camp's population is female. Milad has applied for a bed at a woman's only refuge next to the jungle. But there are 80 hopefuls on the waiting list, and those with children are prioritized. We lock the gate to protect the women and children who live here. We hear that there are prostitution rings in there. I think the women are definitely more vulnerable to sexual violence when they're living in the jungle than when they're here. I have lived in Calais all my life. It used to be a very nice place. We had peace and security. And then the migrants arrived. At the beginning I said, these are unfortunate people. They have nothing and perhaps we should help them. But soon there were thousands of them in what they called the jungle. It's become a city within a city. They have discos, shops, schools, hairdressers. There are riots every day and night. They come to the town center, they vandalize cars with iron bars, they attack people, including children. There are rapes and theft, it's unimaginable. And when we try to defend ourselves, we have the police on our back. My son was attacked in the city center by three migrants. The government has abandoned us. They refuse to talk about it in the media. I just don't understand why these people are not punished. Uh, Euh, il y a 11 ans, elle a perdu donc, son mari, donc elle vit seule. Plus de 3000 migrants en face, une personne qui vit seule. Là, elle ne peut pas parler parce qu'elle est toujours en état de, de choc et elle a fait neuf interventions par la police parce que neuf intrusions. Suite à ça, euh, elle ne sort plus. Au centre, la nuit, elle est toute seule. Euh, il y a eu une émeute le 30 mai. Il y avait quand même une guérilla avec 400 migrants et le feu. Je suis donc venue seule à 3h du matin avec 50 migrants dans la rue armés. Et elle était euh, euh, enfermée dans la cave. La maison était caillassée. Pas être filmée parce qu'ils viennent casser chez moi. Vous habitez dans une maison là, là, à côté Juste ici en bas, où est-ce qu'ils sont tous en train de téléphoner J'ai peur. On a une fille de 18 ans. Elle ne peut plus sortir. La maison, là, la maison, les volets sont baissés. Tout est fermé, on est cloîtré, on peut, on peut plus rien faire. Ça se passe pas une journée sans qu'on appelle. Not a day goes by without us having to call the police. Maybe five or six times a day for this kind of thing. On travaille avec la peur. It's going to be the death of our business because customers won't come when the migrants are here. Depuis trois mois, on a vraiment une explosion des délits de droit commun, à savoir les violences, les vols. Euh, les tentatives de viol, ça existe. Et ça augmente. Les vols dans les véhicules, les vols dans les magasins. Ils ont retourné les voitures. They turned over the cars. In the streets, they went as far as hitting the cars and they broke windows. Moreover, shops are suffering major profit losses. On top of that, the threat of being physically attacked is felt every day. Being robbed at knife point by migrants here is becoming an increasing occupational hazard. They start to go to my pockets and then I'm pinned against the wall. Um, one of them has a blade and starts cutting at my jacket. Um, and one of them tries to put something in my mouth, a napkin or something like that, trying to be quiet. Uh, eventually I break free. I find safety um, back towards the entrance with some volunteers uh, who say this is um, it's like increasingly, increasingly happening. Suddenly, out of nowhere, three people jumped on me. I had not seen these people coming. I was not filming them. I don't know where they were coming from. And they suddenly jumped on me. It all went very quickly. This what? He's got a gun. This man from Afghanistan said there had been a murder here just the night before. Yesterday there is one black guy who's died. Someone is killed. I don't know why, because what? I'm very scary. What concerns me is this is completely unpoliced space. Nobody knows who's here. And if you look behind me, the people on the sofa are covering up their faces. They don't want to be seen. There could be all sorts of reasons. It's an intimidating, edgy atmosphere. Some people are drunk or high on drugs. Fights are commonplace. But you have Sudanese, 
Afghani, Eritrean, Ethiopian, and Syrian camps, which there's a lot of salam alaikum there, as well as the a lot of peace and sharing of that peaceful greeting between those cultures. As we watch food parcels being given out by volunteers, a fight suddenly kicks off between two crowds of Sudanese and Afghan men. Several end up being taken to hospital. There's a lot of salam alaikum. We had the Sudanese on this side, we had the Eritreans on the other side, there were rocks. We saw one man get particularly badly beaten up. Uh, the tear gas is out uh, and the police are now advancing on the Sudanese group here. A lot of peace and sharing of that peaceful greeting between those cultures. Seven people have been injured in Calais in a brawl involving some 200 migrants. French riot police were needed to break up the fighting, said to be between Afghan and African migrants. Tensions remain high following repeated clashes between 300 rival Sudanese and Eritrean migrants. Only the night before, they attacked each other with weapons, including stones and knives. Ce camp improvisé est situé juste en dessous de la station de métro Stalingrad. Ici, certains réfugiés sont passés par la jungle de Calais. Between 300 and 400 migrants began fighting in the afternoon near a food distribution point. During the skirmish, makeshift huts were set on fire. 40 people were injured. The fight escalated quickly into running battles with iron bars, knives and wooden bats. Riot police were called to the scene where police said the fighting was extremely serious. Those involved suffered injuries to their heads, chests and legs. There are fights regularly here, but this one was particularly violent and particularly intense. What we saw this time were really scenes of war. We don't know who the people coming into Europe are. There are criminals amongst the migrants. There are terrorists amongst the migrants. We've seen that. We know that to be a fact now. There is specific uh, intelligence that has been obtained by European security agencies uh, the ISIS, ISIS in Syria uh, and Iraq, is aiming to hit the United Kingdom next. Uh, the intelligence suggesting that British ISIS operatives in Syria and Iraq have been tasked to return to the UK uh, to launch a an attack. The biggest risk that we face from the jungle camp is simply that um, UK nationals who have been here previously who are trying to avoid detection by the police, by the security services, and they are attempting to re-enter the country, claiming to be asylum seekers, when in actual fact they're not. Do you think there are any people from Daesh here? Of course, yeah. In this camp? In the jungle, you mean? Yeah. In the jungle, half, yeah, of course, half. The people here, we don't know which one is a Daesh, which one is a right person. It's all the problem well, aren't you helping migrants get to the UK? Absolutely, I am. Yeah, why, why wouldn't I? We may be facilitating a, um, a rebellion at some points. Essentially, we distribute supplies which um, facilitate people to jump fences. All people of Britain know that the Islamic State is here to stay and we will continue to wage jihad, break borders and one day invade your land where we will rule by the Sharia.